So thank you again for coming to the LinkedIn workshop. Our goals for today are going to be to talk a little bit about the benefits of LinkedIn. Why should you have a profile? Then we'll go through the different sections of the LinkedIn profile, tips and best practices. We'll talk about building your LinkedIn network and some differences between the computer version and the mobile app that I want you to be aware of. All right, so this is what the landing page for LinkedIn would look like. And I am curious um, as we're getting started to know how many of you do you have a LinkedIn profile already? Um, so if you could share in the chat whether maybe you have a LinkedIn profile but don't really use it, if you've never used LinkedIn before, or if you're pretty comfortable with LinkedIn, you're coming here just to see if there are any additional tips that you could pick up. That'd be great. I see some people have it, have it but barely use it. I hear that a lot. Yep, have a LinkedIn profile and use it often. Active LinkedIn profile, old and can't remember the password, business profile. Great, well, it seems like a lot of people here do um, use LinkedIn. So if you have any additional tips to share with each other, feel free to add that through the chat as well. I think that's a great opportunity to learn from one another. If you have not used your LinkedIn profile yet, you'll see on the landing page that you'll wanna click this join now button to get started. So some benefits of LinkedIn, it is the professional platform of choice. There are over 660 million users worldwide and 94% of recruiters report that they search for and review profiles. It's the top recruiter platform. Uh, for me personally, this third bullet point is one that's really come in handy. It's become the new way to connect with people, the new business card. Um, so following a networking event or a career fair, maybe staying in touch with previous coworkers, it's a way to connect with people, to follow and stay in touch with what they're up to professionally. And lastly, it's an opportunity to develop an online portfolio, a project, and a free account. We'll go through some of the different sections of the profile today. We'll review the picture, your headline, summary section, experience section, recommendations and skills, groups, and your personalized link. So first up in the picture, you do want to include a photo. Um, and the photo should be of yourself, not your dog. Um, your profile is much more likely to be clicked on if you have a nice photo included. And we have some tips here. Some best practices for your photo. It should be a headshot. You should be wearing appropriate attire. Now, depending on your industry, you may not necessarily need to wear a suit and a tie. Um, but you should be looking professional. It should only be you in the photo. You want to look inviting and be thoughtful about the background. Um, for those who have less experience with LinkedIn, I am going to show just some of the basics of how to get to these places on the LinkedIn website. Um, so this here is my home page. If I click on me, and view profile. And this little pencil here. I can change a few things from this area. I can change my photo. There's now even a cover or a background photo. And this is where some of the initial information can be edited as well. So my name, headline, which we'll go over in a moment, current position, education location, et cetera. Mm 
Now, when someone does a search on LinkedIn, the first thing that they're going to see is your photo and your headline. And I came across this post the other day just in my feed and I thought, oh, that, that's really interesting. It really stuck with me. Um, and so this is Austin. I believe he's a recruiter or a job coach. Um, and he wrote, imagine you're a recruiter looking to fill an open role right now. You head to LinkedIn, you hit search, and the results pop up. These are some of the things that might show. Your default heading is typically your job title at company. Or if you're a current student, it might say student at Widener. So if these were the results that the recruiter sees, which one seems most interesting? What would entice him to click on the profile? And looking at this, I see data scientist at company, data scientist at company, data scientist at company solving problems at scale across 100 million users and $250 million in revenue. And then it continues on, data scientist at company, data scientist at company. Clearly that third option is so much more interesting to look at. I got a sense of what the person is doing a little bit more than just their job title at company. They're standing out among the other people on LinkedIn. And so we have some tips here, some best practices in developing your own headline. You want to be strategic. Using a multi-part heading is often um, beneficial. Some guidelines, especially for students, include what you're doing and what you aspire to be. Avoid using just your job title. It can really limit you in um, your profile. So some examples we have here. Senior sociology major, child welfare advocate, marathon runner. So now I know the degree of this student, the fact that they're getting ready to graduate, they're going to be available for employment soon. I know the industry that they're in. And then I got to see something that was a little bit more of their personality. It demonstrated a strong work ethic. They're a marathon runner. That's very interesting. This middle example is for someone who is currently working, a process expert, senior product marketing manager, process IQ guy, incorporating some keywords from their industry in their headline. And finally, chemical engineering senior, future pharmaceutical engineer, chemistry club vice president. Again, I know they're getting ready to graduate. I know what they're looking to do. And I got to see a little bit of their leadership skills and the things that they've sought out, out outside of their academic program. So I'm gonna take a second to pause here. Jeff, are there any questions so far? I don't see any yet. All right, so what I would like for us to do is take a minute and think about your own headline to get started. Um, and I'll set a timer for about four minutes over here for you to spend on this. Um, when you're done, you can either share in the chat or give us a little notification that you are done and ready to move on if you don't want to share your headline in there. But I'll give us about four minutes. And we have one question. Okay. And uh, feel free to share questions while we're working. Yeah. Yeah. Will we get a copy of the slides? Yes, I can share a copy with you um, after the presentation, probably tomorrow morning. Thank you. I'm gonna bring back the previous slide for some guidance on developing a headline.
Roseanne, I thought that was a great question. Um, is, is including your volunteer work relevant? I do think so. I think it could be, especially if it somehow connects to uh, a future job goal or something related to a job that you might be seeking. And maybe you could even include a detail about what type of volunteer you are. Seeing some nice examples in the chat. As I'm reading some of these, I'm reminded of how it's kind of like your elevator pitch, um, giving me a little bit so that I decide if I'm interested to learn more. I'm really liking these examples. Give it just about another minute or so. Right. Thank you to those who shared. I see a lot of the multi-part headings um, and especially I feel like towards the end I see a lot of phrases that describe something that's important to you in your professional um, appearance on the LinkedIn profile, helping businesses maximize talent, liberating sex positivity. These are two different headlines. Um, good data database and special projects officer MPA good data in is good data out very interesting and creative purchasing coordinator organizational development leadership major volunteer really really nice you can see how these take it up a notch from your current position title it's a little bit more to it thank you So after you're heading on your LinkedIn profile, you'll have the opportunity to write your summary. So someone would see your summary now if they click on your profile. Um, something that I think is unique about LinkedIn versus perhaps your, your resume is that you can write in, first, write in first person and share a little bit about your story, show a little bit of your professional personality. You can be creative. Um, I found it helpful to follow this guideline in developing this summary. It's what motivates you. How did you end up in this field? What led you here? What you're skilled at? And what's next? So you're using that summary to help position yourself for your next steps. You can list your strengths, your skills, your talents. You can make them very clear on your LinkedIn profile. Um, and as with anything related to your professional um, world, your job searching world, you want to make sure there are no typos, have someone look it over for you, be really careful there. So I'll show you again how you get to this piece through LinkedIn. So if you've already had your LinkedIn set up but you just want to edit it, your summary falls under this about section and you can click this pencil here to edit the summary. If you have not worked on it just yet, you'll use this drop down here, add profile section and about. There'll be the option to start it there.
After summary, you can also fill in your experience section. Um, this will include a lot of the same information as what's on your resume, but you maybe don't want to just cut and paste your resume. Uh, you will continue to use keywords, use numbers, give examples, demonstrate your abilities, show your impacts, highlight achievements. Again, what I think is special about LinkedIn is you can be personable in this description and it can be narrative or bulleted. So in this example, this is a student describing their resident assistant job and we get a sense of an overview of their responsibilities in the first two paragraphs and seeing that they quantified how many students they're working with. And then they include what they're most proud of from this experience, something that they consider to be a great accomplishment or achievement. Uh, I also feel that for students, this is a great opportunity to really highlight your transferable skills. So maybe the only work experience you've had so far is uh, being a waitress, but you're going into social work. And you could use this as an opportunity to say, oh, I learned how to work with people. I learned how to problem solve through this experience, which I hope to bring into my social work job in the future. All right, I don't see any questions. I will quickly show you how to edit that online. Again, that's the add profile section. This falls under background and work experience. So most of what you need will fall under this add profile section. Again, something unique to LinkedIn instead of a resume is that you can upload media. Um, it's a chance to show maybe articles that someone has written that you're involved in. Um, maybe if you are an education major, you could include a lesson plan. Um, it's an opportunity to add a different dynamic to your profile, make it more interactive and fun to look at, and it really can provide evidence of your work. Um, so within that, sorry, I'm gonna head right back. When you added that work experience, or this could be in your education section, if you scroll to the bottom, this is where you have the opportunity to upload, add, or link to documents, to photos, to videos. I've seen students provide clips of presentations that they've done. Uh, it can be really great. Um, Kelly? Yes. We have a question. Uh, I don't, maybe I'll throw this out for the group too, if anybody knows how to do this. Um, any way to find out if maybe you forgot which um, email address you used when you first signed on to LinkedIn to find out what you used? I would have to look at that and play around with it a little bit. Um, let me jump in real quick, hang on. If we could um, take that person's name who asked that question, we can make sure to follow up at the okay. end regarding that. Okay. I feel like it would be, there's gotta be like a forgot password setting somewhere in that initial setup or forgot account. Any other questions before I move on? All right. Next, we have the skills and recommendations section. Uh, you'll wanna think about recommendations like open references. You wanna have some diverse perspectives from different people that can capture your strengths. You can ask people like your managers or colleagues, professors, um, to speak to your work 
in a recommendation on LinkedIn. And it can add some credibility to your profile. When you're thinking about your recommendations, um, think about quality over quantity. Uh, you really want that strong recommendation versus 10 kind of mediocre recommendations. You really wanna have a strong recommendation listed there. And for your skills section, you can add, our suggestion is that you add about five skills to your profile, and then people can start endorsing you for those skills. If you're not sure what types of skills to include on your profile, a good place to start is job descriptions of jobs that interest you. And look for themes throughout those job descriptions. What kinds of skills are repeating throughout and which of those do you feel are some of your strengths? And you can add those to your profile as well. We have a little bit more about how to get recommended here. Um, again, we will email out this PowerPoint, but to get recommended from someone, you can click the me icon at the top of your LinkedIn homepage, select view profile, scroll down to recommendations, click ask to be recommended type the name of the connection, select the name, fill out the relationship and position, and then you can and should include a personalized message with your request. Next up, we have joining groups. Um, so if you look at somebody's LinkedIn profile, I'll pull mine up you will see their interests. And this is where, this is where groups will appear on your profile. So right here, you'll see some of the groups that I follow. Um, you'll want to follow groups that um, make sense for your professional goals and groups that you want to learn from. Um, so initially, as an example, I was in a lot of counseling groups, but then when I came to Widener, I was advising engineering students, um, and I had a lot to learn about engineering. So I joined groups like Mechanical Engineering Forums. This does impact what comes up on your home page, on your feed, um, and so it's a nice way to kind of dictate the kinds of content that you see on your LinkedIn profile. And so you can pick and choose groups that way. Um, we suggest that you join at least three relevant groups. Another nice thing about groups is that you can see the individuals within that group. And so if you're looking for new people to connect with that identify with a certain profession or a certain field, um, that's a way to begin to look for people in that area. Some other best practices in options for other sections on your profile. You will want to complete your education section, list specialized courses that you've taken, honors and awards. You can include school, community, workplace awards. You can list other professional organizations of which you are a member. And you can also list volunteer experiences and causes. Um, just be strategic and thoughtful of anything that you're including on your LinkedIn profile. Again, this is a professional platform and you just want to be weary of any uh, potential negative reactions to anything that you include there. Um, if you develop your LinkedIn profile and you want to be able to share it with people, maybe you want to even include it on your LinkedIn profile, you will want to create a um, personalized URL. And so you can do that by clicking the me icon at the top of the page. I'll bring it back. Me, view profile. works for me.
view profile and you'll see the link here for edit public profile and URL. And this is where you can change that link. Again, a really nice thing to include on your resume once you've developed your profile, um, then people can see your, the portfolio of work that you've created and more details about your experience. So to summarize some of our next level profile tips, you'll want to focus your photo, maximize your heading, add a first person summary section, Take advantage of uploading the free media, solicit strategic recommendations, join online professional groups, and create a custom URL for your profile. Uh, I will speak about connecting with people on LinkedIn. I just wanted to check if there's any questions. So something to keep in mind is that like your resume, your LinkedIn profile is fluid. It's expected that it's going to be changing. Um, you can keep building and updating it. But what's really important is that you start with the basics and establish a presence. So for making connections, uh, we have the 100 connection challenge here thinking about trying to make 100 connections over the next month. Think about your campus community, students, faculty, advisors, alumni. Think about people from your workplace, maybe coworkers, supervisors. This includes volunteer work. Think about previous employment that you'd like to stay connected with. You can include your personal network, family, friends, neighbors. And if you do just three connections a day for one month, you're pretty close to 100 connections. One of my favorite aspects of LinkedIn is this alumni tool. Um, it's a great strategy for networking, great way if you are an alumni to connect with people that maybe you haven't seen in a while. Um, and so I do wanna show how to navigate this. So the way that I like to get there is I like to be on my profile page and scroll down and click on Widener University. Um, all of you should have it under your education. When I click on Widener University, I see their posts, but on the left hand side, I can click on alumni. And this is our alumni dashboard. Uh, it does include current students and alumni who have listed Widener on their profile. You can search by pretty much anything you want to. You could search major or degree name, a company name, certain job titles. Um, so when I demo this in class, I like to ask if anybody has a specific company they would like me to search for. And so if anyone wants to drop anything in the chat, please feel free, otherwise I'll go with my most answered question. Jeff, just let me know. All right, I'll jump in. So when I do this in class, I feel like 99% of the time people say Boeing. And so I search Boeing. Now, anybody who has Boeing on their profile will pop up here. I can now narrow it down however I would like. So I might select, I just wanna see people in the greater Philadelphia area who have Boeing. And there's 319 Widener alumni in the greater Philadelphia area who have Boeing listed on their profile. Maybe I want to be sure that it's somewhere that they currently work that would fall under where they work. And so we're down to 165. And finally, maybe I just wanna see someone who's also somehow related to business. So that narrows it more. So if I'm advising a student, I might encourage them to 
take a look at some of these profiles. See if that person's career path is interesting to you. Maybe that's somebody that you want to connect with as you start to build up your connections. If you want to connect with someone, um, my suggestion is that you click connect, but you don't just send now, you choose to add a note here. And I have some slides to talk about that. Um, adding a note allows you to include a personalized message. It's best if you can state how you found the individual, write professionally, have a nice tone, style, grammar, spelling. The challenge sometimes is that in that initial message, you have 300 characters, a character limit. Um, so it does need to be short and sweet, but best if you can state how you found them, um, explain why you're reaching out within that short uh, message. So in this example, we have, I'm a senior criminal justice major at Widener and found your alumni profile. Your career path at blank is exactly what I aspire to. Would you be willing to briefly connect to advise me on my job search for entry level roles? Thanks so much for considering. So just based on that message, I understand that this individual also goes to Widener, they're interested in my career path, and they're looking for some advice on their job search. I'm much more likely to accept a request like that than just I'd like to connect with you on LinkedIn. I think of it like if someone sent me a random request on Facebook or on Instagram, I would not accept that unless I knew them. This is your opportunity to explain why you're connecting. Now that being said, there are some differences with the computer version of LinkedIn and the app version. On the app, you cannot customize the invitation to connect. It will automatically send the generic default message. And so as best as you can, you want to tell people how you know them and explain why you want to connect. So when connecting, I do recommend that if possible, you're using the computer uh, version. And lastly, I'd just like to show you the job search feature on LinkedIn. And home. I could click this jobs button here. And let's say I want to search for a social worker, Philadelphia. Gonna look very similar to other job search engines that you may have used like Indeed or Handshake. Um, but what's unique here is that it will show you if any of your connections work somewhere or if anyone who is an alumni works there too. I think that's a great way to maybe approach someone to learn more about the company, maybe their culture, maybe they'd even refer you for the position. Um, but it's a nice feature on LinkedIn that you won't find somewhere like Indeed. So I'd like to open it up for questions. Again, we will stay here for a little bit to see if any questions pop up as you reflect on that information. Um, we also have a lot of online resources now that are available to you through our My Widener page. 